distinguished uh, panelists, distinguished guests, Mr. Mustafiz, uh, Assalamu alaikum and uh, good morning. Let me first of all congratulate uh, Mustafiz and uh, the sponsors for organizing the second uh, Fashionology Summit in Bangladesh. Sitting there, I was thinking as to where I fit in. This morning, I tried my best to be as fashionable as possible, but I don't know, according to stick, where I stand. Uh, and I, my daughter, who is sitting here, who has little more uh, fashion sense than I do, being a, a, an older generation, is told that you look uh, terrible. So I will start from that uh, stick. Uh, I'm extremely happy that uh, uh, innovators, uh, fashionologists uh, from around the world are here to listen to Bangladesh as to what Bangladesh has to offer. So what I'll try, I will try and uh, give you a three sentence of introduction as to what Bangladesh is and how Bangladesh is and then go into the uh, future. And uh, my distinguished colleague from the European Commission has left very good clue for me to uh, say a few words. Now, uh, I'm sure that all of you know that Bangladesh uh, is a relatively young country and a nation. Uh, it uh, went through a war of liberation in 1971 uh, and uh, became Bangladesh. Uh, the start was extremely uh, horrific and bad. Uh, I still remember days when uh, we used to have a, a, a big struggle to put the three meals on the table. So that is the beginning of Bangladesh. Some of you probably don't know, the younger generation possibly cannot imagine what kind of a hardship we went through when we were in the colleges and the universities in those days. So Bangladesh has made a tremendous progress and a contribution for that progress goes to the farmers. These are the people who really kept Bangladesh alive in initial stage. Now, when agriculture was coming uh, to a point of saturation uh, and economists were struggling and thinking that is the end of Bangladesh, the whole RMG sector came along as a savior. They actually lifted the economy from the, uh, from the agriculture to the industry. And that actually, in some extent, made the story of Bangladesh uh, quite attractive to the global uh, economists and, and, and developmentalists. Uh, now, we have come to a level where there are certain sectors which has reached to its uh, uh, maximum output. It has, in some cases, it has plateaued, uh, but there are new industry, uh, new ideas and innovations coming up. And I think the fashion industry is one uh, which has that potential. And I'm extremely happy. I came a little early, and, and Mustafiz took me around to the hall to show me how the other pavilion looks and how our pavilion looks. It's, it's much uh, more encouraging uh, in terms of seeing uh, and the, uh, the jeans industry evolving in Bangladesh. Now, what that we need to do and what the foreign office need to uh, do, because sometimes there's a apprehension that some of us only know how to put on a nice suit in the morning and in the afternoon and go and join the cocktail. Uh, but I don't think our life is so easy. The, the first thing uh, that, uh, I, I'll, in terms of future, I'll, I can remember of three things right now. One is investment in people. Uh, that's where uh, we have to really focus. And when I say investment in people, it is not only by the government, but also by private sector, by NGOs, and by everybody. Uh, there, we have to really be very 
innovative, careful, and very planned in terms of uh, investing in the people. The second thing that we possibly need to do is the stability. And I uh, need not to remind you that uh, one little incident or one little uh, 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 personality can destabilize uh, any country, including Bangladesh. Stability is of crucial importance. And you know, sometimes when you are living days after days, years after year, in a stable society, you don't actually realize how valuable that stability is. Go and ask the people in Iraq, in Syria, in, uh, in Libya. They will tell you what stability means, what peace and order means for them. Forget about economic development. But, uh, uh, but in terms of the, the third is the whole issue of partnership, eh? partnership with the world, outreaching uh, to form networks and partnerships through these kinds of events, and that's where I will focus today. We have been uh, in the policy realms of Bangladesh realized that our most of our policy uh, inputs has so far been ad hoc. There was a Rana Plaza, we came in, jumped into and, and tried to create uh, a, a, a new way of uh, sustaining our uh, RMG sector. Uh, and we have been thinking for quite some time that can we move into a more structured, planned, integrated way of policy making for the government which will support industries like this to grow. Uh, and uh, also in the process we realized that there's not too many houses available who can help us in putting together a, a, a more structured policy. So we went to various places. Finally, we had, well, had a cooperation agreement with the Cambridge University, uh, where we have already set up our own uh, um, lab. And the first policy issue that we have picked up is the RMD sector how our RMG sector faced with the uh, AI will evolve and what the government needs to do in terms of its policy to help it. Uh, you'll be happy to know uh, that uh, the Cambridge has uh, done their preliminary work in Bangladesh. They'll be coming back in July to have much broader uh, workshop to advise the government of Bangladesh as to what they need to do in terms of RMD sector when it moves into the AI uh, uh, field. And one thing we have also learned in the process that these initiatives has to be paid and financed by us. You cannot go and ask uh, donors to pay for these kinds of things. So, so the whole exercise is paid by the government of Bangladesh. This is also something that you need to do when you, you know, we, we grew up learning and writing statements the technology transfer, technology transfer, technology transfer. And in the process, we realize that technology never gets transferred. You have to actually buy technology, or you have to innovate technology. So this is the other learning uh, that, that is very extremely important. So that is one, uh, and it is led by the Foreign Office. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, the second question is, which my distinguished colleague from the European Union raised the whole issue of GSP. Uh, you'll be happy to know that we have already started a process of dialogue, if not the negotiation as yet, on looking at beyond and after GSP. Is it GSP plus or some new kind of an arrangement that will help our industry? Not only RNG, but other industries also. We have a number of industries coming up that also need a special kind of a facility to be able to uh, do business, not only to European countries, but also with other countries. But we have taken European Union in this stride, and that's why uh, the ambassador has rightly pointed out that sustainability is an extremely important component in this. And that brings me to the end. I can tell you that that's why I put the investment in people as extremely important. Investment in people in every sense of the word. It is not only skill development, but also giving their due rights. Thank you very much.